Hello, Leo. Welcome to your weekly reading for August 12th to the 18th. This is for Leo, Leo Rising, and Leo Moon. And we're going to jump right into it. Leo, first things first, happy birthday. I hope you're having an amazing birthday season. This is going to be a charged up week. It's got We got some wild energies this week. We actually, you see that the biggest aspect, the best aspect of the week, Wednesday, August 14th, this is when Mars will conjunct Jupiter. And there's another one you see with the two green asterisks here indicating the best aspects of the week. But Mars conjuncting Jupiter is major we've been building up to this as we know mars is conjuncting jupiter which is a powerful aspect in your 11th house because it's in gemini that is your house of your hopes and wishes and dreams so big things happening for you it's also your social network groups you belong to organizations your communities it can even be linkedin community here but this is going to be really really special because this conjunction is really powerful now we have not had mars conjuncting jupiter in gemini in 35 years it's been a really long time so if you can think back to 1989 i mean i was a kid so i i i don't really uh, you yeah. know i wouldn't remember the energies around that time but you know there could just see similar patterns see similar yeah. patterns that uh if, if if you remember that time but this really is mars conjuncting jupiter this is you coming into your power in those areas of your life that i just said especially your future hopes and wishes and dreams this aspect is like a 12 out of 10 you're definitely going to feel it. It is drive. It's courage. It's Mars, the planet of action, uh, passion as well with Jupiter, the planet of good fortune, good, uh, 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 good luck, expansion. Really, really nice. All about success here. All about success. And, you know, it really is kicking off this new cycle. You're definitely going to feel this, especially when it's in Gemini. This is you walking the walk, talking the talk. This is really heightened energy. In fact, it might be a lot of energy that's happening right now, especially with the sun still in your sign. So really harness it and apply it toward your dreams. Everything that you want to accomplish, everything that you have been manifesting in your life, use this aspect to your advantage. It's really, really, really nice. Now, you see on the same day, Mercury's going to retrograde. And Leo, Mercury's retrograde pretty much the entire month. Was in Virgo, now in your sign. So... A lot of y'all will definitely have these moments, uh, especially with Mercury Retrograde, as I mentioned in your monthly forecast, you could return to projects from the past, creative pursuits from the past. They could start resurfacing now. People from your past, especially exes, former lovers, they they float around this time, okay? You could be getting messages. Mercury is the messenger as well, coming through your DMs and, and whatnot. But they will start floating back. And you can even think back to the new moon that we had in your sign on August 4th. There may be something that you're returning to around that time. Maybe there's something that you're settling or something that you're adjusting from around that time as well. Just remember, this is a time to reassess all these retrogrades, a time to really reflect and, you know, what's happening in your sign. So it may... you may go on a really deep level here as in what is my role for you know my family my squad the collective work with whatever it is for you you may actually be taking a really big time big big moment this week just reassessing things even uh you know returning to things that uh brought you a lot of joy from the past now thursday august 15th mars squaring saturn so now we've come to the saturn squares and this is the first one and this is a big one, all right? This is the two malefic planets being naughty, all right? They're being naughty. You're going to feel this throughout the week, maybe for the rest of the month. It is that time where you're going to feel that squeeze, okay? Mars can be conflicty, conflicty, but really honestly coming after mars conjuncting jupiter it's a very it, the timing is just very interesting because mars really wants to accelerate and saturn is saying no 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 because saturn's limitations and restrictions so you have all this momentum from mars conjuncting jupiter i mean very roadrunner style but saturn is saying hang on hang on let me chaperone you, okay? And Saturn walks really slow. So Saturn, remember, is discipline. Uh, it's, you know, being focused. Saturn is life lesson. So there is going to be some sort of lesson that you might learn around this time, especially with, uh, don't forget, Venus is in Virgo. Uh, you've got Saturn, Neptune, in Pisces, Saturn, now 
uh, squaring Mars in your 11th house of your hope, wish, wishes, and dreams, Virgo in your second house, Saturn and Pisces in your eighth house. So there really could be something here with money. There could be some finances where you're just feeling a little bit of a slowdown, but again, you may be reassessing things. Remember, Saturn, there is going to be some lesson here, but it's uh, for you to grow. This is Saturn, okay? So Saturn sure is a malefic planet, but Saturn rewards you. Remember, Saturn represents karma as well. So this is you growing in this capacity, but also becoming stronger in the end when you pass Saturn's test. Remember to always tune in to uh, you know your higher self, all right? Everything's going to be easier. You're going to be able to pass that test as long as you are really, really in control here. And remember, I said this is a month of practicing patience. Now you're really going to feel it with Saturn. But we've had these aspects before. It, it may be just, you know, water off a duck's back. If you're already patient, if you're already in tune with your higher self, it could be just something that you're just, okay, yeah, I'm just going to go a little bit slower here at Saturn's pace. Um, but Saturn and Pisces, the eighth house, represents uh, shared resources. So other people's money that includes bonuses, commissions, uh, inheritance, investments, royalties, loans. There just could be some sort of slowdown here. The eighth house is also transformation. It's death and rebirth. It's ruled by Pluto. So there is this big transformation that you might be seeking uh, that it's going to be a little bit more of a process, all right? Especially with Saturn here. Saturn is structures. Uh, you can even think of Saturn as systems in your life. And so you're just going to be working with these energies. Maybe there's going to be an adjustment. Maybe you'll even pivot in some ways. But just remember, you're working with these energies and you're going to feel a little bit more of it when Jupiter squares Saturn on Monday. That's why I wrote Monday in parentheses here because when we get to Sunday, Sunday and money, re Monday really is, uh, all those aspects really come as a package. They really come as a package deal. Uh, so this is just your time to not only work with these energies, but just weed out anything that's not meaningful in your life at this time, all right? That's going to help you really stay disciplined uh, with these retrogrades. You're reassessing things anyway. So the things that are slowing you down, you that you know you're just like okay I'm, i need to leave this in the past really good time to do that remember saturn is chrono saturn is time and so this is really that patience that saturn requires slow and steady wins the race so just take this time to reflect and venus and virgo honestly uh can be even though it's in its fall it can be helpful right now venus and virgo is being very practical it is you know really great for problem solving remember venus and virgo has that perfectionist energy paying attention to the little details so uh just remember just practice that patience you're going to be absolutely fine and there could be some sort of competitive uh energy uh that you may feel around this time as well well, there could be something here with uh, a friend, a, a group that you belong to, something with friendships here, all right? Something with friendships that could also, or group that uh, is helping, is part of your transformation. So keep that in mind. Now, Sunday, August 18th, and Monday as well, you see we a chock full of aspects here. We've got Mercury squaring Uranus, Venus opposite Saturn, the Sun conjuncting Mercury, and then Venus squaring Saturn, all happening at the same time. Now, the first one, Mercury squaring Uranus, we had this July 21st. This happened during full uh, the full moon in Capricorn. Uh, something around this time could float around. Mercury squaring Uranus is just, it's surprising news. Receiving surprising news, maybe even information around that time. Remember, that full moon was conjuncting Pluto, so that even brought a little bit more, you know, things to the surface. So just remember Mercury retrograde is of the past, all right? So it is of the past, so there may be, uh, again, something around the new moon in Leo, August 4th, that you may have manifested or launched or something around that time. Remember, Mercury is in your sign now. And when I say surprising news and information, it could be from someone of the past. Remember, Mercury is retrograde uh, in your sign. Uranus is all about the unexpected. So, Unexpected news, but at the same time, remember Mercury squaring Uranus is for the collective, so it could also be you that's uh, giving news. You're giving news, surprising news to someone, and, and, and it, it, 
it also could be communicating. Mercury is communication. So you could be communicating in a surprising way. All right. Remember Uranus is surprises, the unexpected. So just remember, uh, I think I talked about this in my last live stream. Words are very powerful. So you always just want to be mindful about the things that you say as above so below you want to be a reflection of yourself be your higher self uh your authentic self as well don't let anyone get your goat around this time or i should say lion rather and maybe it's a big message with the siren coming around but uranus is also breakthrough so use this moment to have a breakthrough that you need and what's going to really help is the fact that you see the sun is conjuncting mercury in your sign. We have a Mercury Kazemi in Leo. This is absolutely amazing because this is Mercury being in the heart of the sun. That's what uh, Kazemi is, is. So think about that refresh, that alignment. This is clarity. This is the light bulb moment aspect of the week. So you could have a lot of clarity and awareness around this day. Should there be something that, you know, uh, it feels Mercury retrograde or there's a little fog around. Now, Venus opposite Saturn. Yes. So this for a lot of Leos, especially if you're Leo rising uh, with all of these aspects, but obviously every Leo is going to feel this. Venus opposite Saturn. This is when you could feel that squeeze when it comes to commitments now. Okay. We're talking about Venus and Saturn. So uh, Saturn, remember Kronos time, but Saturn is all about long-term commitments, long-term goals. And so there could be something here where you feel a squeeze in love, money, creativity, um, everything that you represent, right? Leo, that Leo uh, represents, that even Venus represents, uh, but also Saturn being in Pisces, eighth house. There's that relationship aspect there and money aspect there as well. So it could be something where you may feel uh, maybe some delays around this time when it comes to, you know, answers that you're looking for or whatnot. Or it may you might realize that you have to work a little harder for something that you really want. Remember, we're playing by Saturn's rules. Saturn is testing you, but asking you to practice patience at the same time. Don't just remember Saturn is karma and will reward you. Uh, you pass this test. Okay. So, uh, everything here is with, with this aspect, don't forget Venus and Virgo. Yes, there are benefits to it, but Venus and Virgo can be very self-critical as well. So just try not to overanalyze things, work with these energies, all right? Be in touch with your higher self and anything that you do want and that you are seeking and that is part of your plan or legacy or finish line. Think about how good it will feel when you reach it, once you pass Saturn's test, because we're going to pass these aspects. Now, Venus squaring Jupiter, you've got the two benefic planets in a square, so with this one, it really is just a time where with Venus squaring Jupiter, you just want to be mindful about being extravagant, uh, 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 overindulgent, maybe even overspending around this time as well, especially because Venus, which does rule money, is in your second house of of, of money, of finances. And so, uh, and then remember, you've got uh, Jupiter in Gemini in your 11th house. So there could, it's, uh, I think I made a reference in another sign, uh, but there is something here with groups. There's something here with communities. There's something here with your long term wishes and dreams, but also friendships. So there could be something here where maybe you really want to join Soho House and you put in your membership and you're just, you know, maybe you don't need it. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe this is a side where you're like, okay, I'm looking at my uh, bank account and, you know, I don't really need Soho House, but the Mars and Jupiter and Gemini energy is making me feel really social and I want to be part of this, you know, club or organization. So there's got to be those type of things that may float around that's just like a small example but it's fine to be social venus is very social and then remember you've got jupiter in a very very social sign uh in gemini in your 11th house but it is with all these aspects it is just 
reading the room a little bit if when you are being social and i'm only saying that because the aspects are so strong and they're all happening uh on sunday right before monday where jupiter square saturn and then we have the full moon in aquarius that's going to be squaring uranus so with that said but you've got mars conjuncting jupiter you've got the mercury kazemi in your sign so it's going to be a wild one it's going to be a wild one leo but y'all are leos y'all could y'all love this y'all love this let's see what's going on for you all right leo let's see what's going on for you for august 12th to the 18th for leo leo rising and leo moon if you want to read for any other placements in your chart you are absolutely welcome to all right, Leo, so uh, I do a traditional cult across spread. It offers the best overview. If we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Leo, happy birthday. I hope you're having an amazing birthday season. Y'all got so much going on. Y'all have so much going on. I love the fact that you have Mars and Jupiter in your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. And let's get started okay so uh wow yeah it is gonna be a it's gonna be a week it's gonna be a week for you uh but you are definitely um a lot like, okay so remember how i literally just said venus and virgo in your second house finances income salary you got saturn in pisces in your eighth house shared resources but there's money involved there so you've got two the two money houses in the zodiac wheel activated for you this week and you can see that this is a big week for money all right big money week a lot of money stuff happening uh partnerships is coming up as well uh energetically uh there may be something there but let's get started. You're going to be fine. You're going to be good. You got a big focus on money. You see, you got four pentacles here. And then we'll talk about this. Okay, let's get started. You have the ace of pentacles. Now, what I love about this is that did you see your last week's reading? Did you see your last week's reading? All right. So, yes, uh, I, I, it, it was in your final outcome. I love that it's now in your past. So there is there's new things happening for you okay there are new things new paths that are opening up for you maybe you're receiving things in your physical world as well these uh, i mean there's the biggest pentacle in the deck pentacles represent money wealth but also your physical reality okay um very something rooting up for you now or it may have already done so you know it depends on when you watch this reading because i dropped these readings a few days before the actual week so if you haven't yet wow it's coming it's coming so you even see the golden pathway here as i pointed out in your last week's reading uh it's it's your it, this is a gateway all right coming after that new moon in your sign we have the you know lion's gate in your sign this is big this is big so i absolutely love this for you pay attention to uh uh all this growth mars and jupiter again growth and expansion that's happening in your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams but it seems like a lot of y'all may have started a new job you could have even started something uh like a side hustle there could be some sort of income stream uh that's that's coming through that feels really charged up that you're really excited about i mean aces usher in that new change and new beginnings too now you've got the moon and the heart of your spread so you're definitely going to be in your head you're definitely going to be thinking a lot remember what i said try not to overanalyze things because that's it's just going to be a tangle up there especially with venus and virgo you got mercury retrograde and your sign uh, there's a lot happening this week the saturn squares so as long as you trust go more up here right your pineal gland your third eye your your sixth sense you're going to be fine okay i mean it is the moon intuition right so trust your intuition that is going to make all the difference that's going to lead the way there are going to be some things that uh remember i mentioned structures and systems well you even see the two uh columns here the two towers here You've got to get to the sea. You've got to get to the sea. All right. So there is a sense of something this week where, again, there may be oh, you overanalyzing things or uh, being in a situation where there are some things that need to shift or adjust. But a lot of it's going to have to do with a again, intuition that's going to help you. Secondly, really trusting your emotions and be ready to 
emotionally evolve as well. All right. You even see the dog and the wolf here representing that evolution, but it is the moon that emotions uh, and intuition. You even see the hermit's face in the moon here. Okay. So it is card eight, uh, 18, one, eight equals nine, which is the hermit card. So going within really doing that soul searching remember i said earlier a lot of y'all will be doing that going deep this week but you're going to be fine just try not to overanalyze things uh and in some situations here it may be something that is of the past okay because you see you do have the eight of cups where you also see the moon here as well so the eight of cups is in your challenge area and there may be something that you really have to let go and it may be the that squeeze that you feel this week i've got to let this go but i don't want to i've got to let this go but i need more time i've got to let this go i don't have enough time those remember what i said about over analyzing things so just Work with your energies, trust your intuition, you're going to be absolutely fine, but you're you're definitely going to have to let something go. In fact, didn't you get, you did get the devil card last week too, in, in, in the heart of your spread, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so yes, so it's still showing up here, but in a different way in a different way, as you can see. Now, this is going to be part of your transformation. You want to know why? I don't know why I gave you the peace sign. Uh, this is going to be part of your transformation, but the moon in tarot attributed to Pisces. Okay. Now, the Eight of Cups attributed to Saturn and Pisces. So, you got these two Pisces cards. Remember, Saturn is having all these squares this week, oppositions, and Saturn and Pisces is your eighth house. Remember what I said? That's death and rebirth. That's transformation. And so there's going to be something that you just may be in your head about, about I've got to move to the next level, but you've got to let things go. And a lot of y'all, it's going to be up here, okay? It's going to be up here. You did get the moon. In the heart of your spread, so there could be some things, even like on a psych, uh, subconscious level, even like on a psychological level, that is the eighth house. Remember, there's that in intensity and depth with the eighth house as well in terms of you transforming. All right. Now, you did get the eight of pentacles in your crown. So it does seem like you are on a mission. You're on a mission. You are ready to rock and roll. You are laser focused. You are just working. You're working. And this is someone who's not distracted. This is someone who is working toward his legacy, working toward his goals, and he's going to meet it because he is so successful at what he does. And he's not going to let anyone stop him from working on his pentacles. He even removed himself from the village here. So this is really nice. It seems like it's uh, like I said, you're going to be in it to win it. It's like you walking the walk, talking the talk this week. You also have the four of pentacles. So the four of pentacles on the rootier spread. There may be something here, a big shift with money. It seems like there is a direction you want to go, but there's you feeling uh moving at a slower pace or just there's something there that feels heavy okay even you can even see uh the man here the four of pentacles he's really not budgy he's not budgeable <laughs> um so this is fine it's just saying put things in order and that's what you may be doing this week because four is all about order think about four legs of a table that stability remember i also said structure okay so putting things uh having structure and especially when it comes to fi finances but uh essentially the foundations of your life as well remember uh, pentacles are your physical reality so there really could be this big change that's actually happening for you it's going to be really big and lastly you also have the six of pentacles in your future and so this is really special the six of pentacles this is everything harmonizing this is you can see the very philanthropic man here help you know supporting these people that need that support this is really special because if you are seeking that support it's coming it's in your future you've got to uh not get in your head too much and there's things that you have to let go especially up here as well okay don't forget that uh it, it, that is an eclipse by the way that's happening here that's an eclipse in the eight of cups so game changing moment too so it could be something really significant uh maybe even a new way of seeing things or thinking about things but you're going to be absolutely fine you've got the six of pentacles now this brings that balance and that harmony i think i mentioned that this 
this is harmonizing him. Uh, you see the scale in his hand, that balance. So there is a sense of if you are seeking this wealth, even spiritual wealth, you're moving into it, okay? You're moving into it. Secondly, it could be you that uh, you're moving in a place where you are supporting others. You, are, maybe in a financial sense, uh, remember pentacles are your physical reality as well, but this is all about action. It's that act of giving. It's that act of giving and supporting others that is moving, that makes this card special. So there is going to be some action that you're going to take or you're going to receive. Now, the thing is, if you're going to be the one that's supporting people, just remember, give as much as you can give. Uh, there is that balance when it comes to generosity and gratitude. There is that balance. It's why he has the scale. He's only giving as much as he can, because if you give and give and give and give and give, then you've got nothing for yourself. So just keep that in mind. Everything is balanced here. Let's get to your stuff. Oh, my goodness. Leo, uh, if you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me what's going on. Uh, you know I love you. Happy birthday. This is going to be a big week. It is actually, it's going to be a big week for you, but a very transformative week for you. All right. With all this eighth house activity. Now, uh, oh, there's... There you go. There you go. That's so funny. Uh, well, I really love this. Uh, this is really great. Um, very interesting here. Uh, you did get the King of Wands, who is Leo. So I really love this. So this is just, uh, you know, energetically, this is you being in your prime, you being in a place where you feel in your comfort zone. Uh, there is a sense of feeling that surge, that power, that energy. A lot of it, again, will be the Mars-Jupiter conjunction. But this is someone who is a leader full of passion, full of passion. This is someone who can't even sit still. And even with Mars and Jupiter in Gemini, remember, I think I mentioned this in one of your past readings. I mean, we're talking about the nervous system. We're talking about Mercury at play as well. There's a lot of that. He's restless. He's full of passion. So you could be feeling that uh, this week as well. There's a lot that you want to do. Like he is leaning out of his throne. He wants to do things, but this is epitome of fire. And so think of that fire energy, even you being a fire sign, all that passion inside you and a uh, very transform, uh, transformative king as well. He loves transformation. Big entrepreneur here as well. A lot of y'all may be seeking that with uh, everything that's happening in in, in your spread. Now, uh, uh, and so continue to move forward. And it seems like, again, you're not going to be distracted. Just don't overanalyze you do have the six of cups as well i love that you got these two sixes right next to each other the six of pentacles and the six of cups this uh six of cups came up in your external factors area so this card is highly associated with nostalgia remember mercury's going retrograde in your sign again you're going to be reassessing things reevaluating things thinking about those things that brought you joy like i said earlier so uh i love that it showed up in your spread so have those moments we know that nostalgia is factually scientifically proven to improve wellness and well-being and mental health and all of that good stuff right thinking about you know uh the band that you were in in college with with your roommates and y'all were doing Nirvana songs. I don't know. All those fun memories that, you know, let them flood, let them flood. Now, the other thing is this card is another card of just this kindness and, and sharing and giving and receiving. And it's just really beautiful coming with the Six of Pentacles. So there's, uh, it seems like you, there's a support system uh, that could come through partnerships. Partnerships is really strong. There even could be the ending of one or the turning point in one actually now that i think about it you do have that full moon in aquarius that will happen the day after sunday on monday uh that's your opposite sign in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships uh but even still it does look like you have this great support system there's a lot of comfort security protection in this card it feels really good now you also have the king of swords wow so a lot of uh you're just ready you're ready uh and this is also indicating yes there may be a lot going up in you know you're processing a lot especially with the king of swords swords are the mental suit you've got the moon in the heart of your spread so yes have more of that 
uh, clarity. All right. I know Mercury is going to be retrograde. I know Venus is going to be in Virgo, but have that clarity, have that clarity as you make those decisions, as you have those ideas. Remember the sun conjuncting Mercury, the Mercury could see me. That's going to be in your sign is going to bring a lot of clarity, awareness, the aha moment. All right. And this is a very powerful King who's ready to strike. He's ready to strike. He's ready to get going. Uh, now you have the hermit. So very interesting. The hermit in your final outcome, uh, it's because remember you've got the moon and the heart of your spread. So now you're really getting the message here that's saying, go within go within trust your intuition do that soul searching really really uh you know even contemplation uh mindfulness all of that's going to really help the hermit is all about wisdom all about wisdom i mean gray enters wisdom this card is all gray but uh the great thing about the hermit is you see his staff is flanked right in the ground right uh so he's he's still rooted in the present as he thinks about his future and sure he's got a little lantern that lantern light yeah you can see uh you know maybe 10 20 feet in front of you but uh that's the whole point here is that stay grounded at in the present as you think of your future and as you think of your future all the answers are going to come from within the hermit is called the hermit for a reason if you think about the medieval times people would trek for miles and miles and miles to get that sage wisdom that the hermit has okay those answers are inside you that light is inside you all right and so that lantern can help you to a degree but it's the light inside you that's going to uh, bring a lot of resolve and, and problem solving and even clarity and that mindfulness. And also there's big moments of I know what to do. I know which direction I want to go. Uh, but yeah, it just seems like this is going to be a week where we you may really go within as part of your transformation. Um, what time is it? OK, let, I'll do a clarifier for you. I'll do one for the moon here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, really, really go within. You got judgment. Uh, and that's actually a good thing because this is part of your process, part of your transformation. This is having this spiritual awakening. Remember what I said earlier, gray in tarot is wisdom. You see Archangel Gabriel blowing the trumpet, the dead are rising, the dead are gray. All right, so listening listening okay to 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 uh your intuition hearing that blow of the trumpet really connecting within that's going to let you have that aha moment let you have that moment where you really realize this is what is meaningful in my life and i'm going straight for it all right so this is really great this is really nice and uh yeah, this is going to be a very spiritual week for you, but there is also a lot of money stuff here. And, you know, we have careers to make money, so a lot of career stuff as well. Uh, but yet there's, it, again, you're moving in the right direction, uh, but you definitely will have this awakening. Just don't overanalyze things. Anyway, um, <laughs> Vir uh, Virgo, uh, Leo, thanks so much. Uh, if you like this reading, would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments, tell me what's going on. On. happy birthday you're going through a big thing and listen i've said this in your monthly forecast you're going through your birthday season everyone who goes through their birthday season they do have those moments where they really do go within they ask the big questions what have i accomplished i'm turning another year what what do i want to accomplish what do i want in my life so you're gonna go through a big transformative week just really go within uh, you've got the support system uh and, and you're laser focused moving toward your goals all right and a lot of it could be with new things that have already happened for you all right so uh leo's y'all are amazing next week we will talk more about the full moon in aquarius again that is in your seventh house partnerships relationships there could be some sort of culmination turning point around that time we'll talk about it next week thanks so much leo i'll see you next week bye-bye